Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the regular meeting of the DeKalb City Council, March 23, 2020. Prior to our call to order and roll call this evening, uh, I would like to, as usual, uh, ask anyone in the audience who would like to speak to any item on the agenda, or for that matter, any item not on the agenda, to kindly get a speaker request form, bring that forward, give that to our executive assistant, Ruth Scott, and we'll get you on at the appropriate time. Due to the COVID virus scenario, COVID-19, uh, the city of DeKalb has instituted an online submission form allowing folks who choose, who chose not to come to our meeting tonight in person to file those uh, electronically. We have shared those submissions uh, with our city council. They have had a chance hopefully to at least look at those and I will be reading those this evening. Prior to our getting on with the business of conducting this city council meeting, allow me a minute or two to give everyone a brief synopsis of where the city of DeKalb is postured as we battle this COVID-19 virus. First of all, we are open for business. Even though we are somewhat limited in providing all the services folks are accustomed to. Our essential services, including those with police, finance, fire, water, public works, and most administrative activities are, are just, the, we, we, those are taking place, but again with some limitations. Our employees are being asked to follow the same dictates as you, keeping social distancing, washing your hands, using good common sense in making decisions on your travel around our community. While City Hall has limited access, we urge citizens who need something to call us. Our city manager, Bill Nicholas, is keeping his full-time hours, as are a number of municipal building employees. Some have agreed to work at home. As your mayor, I am visiting this building each and every day, but will be working at home during much of the time. But I am available by phone, by email, by text, each and every day, and I'd encourage you to feel free to contact me. I would think the same goes to for any of our aldermen uh, seated here this evening. We are in ongoing contact with state and federal legislators, including Governor Pritzker and Senators Durbin and Duckworth. We're receiving information from the Illinois Municipal League on such items as certifying special child care facilities and on what is essential and what is not essential in terms of conducting a business. We have ongoing conversations with our county health department, our Northwestern Medicine facilities, and those businesses that are attempting so hard to stay financially afloat. We need to work together and we will get through this. With that, I call the meeting to order and ask our executive assistant, Ruth Scott, who is filling in for city clerk, Lynn Fazekas. Lynn has felt uncomfortable at coming out personally. And so Ruth Scott will uh, do her usual yeoman's job uh, at uh, helping us uh, this evening. So. Uh, Ruth, if you would call the roll, please. Morris? Here. Finucane? Here. Smith? Here. Perkins? Here. McAdams? Here. Verbeck? Here. Favor? Here. Mayor Smith? Here. Eight present. You will note that uh, we have uh, done some social distancing of our own. Uh, we usually have seven folks and uh, the mayor up here, we have wards one, three, five, and seven, and myself. Wards two, four, and six are down here. Uh, we would ask each and every alderman to kindly check the volume level on, or the volume uh, button on your 
uh, microphone. And I've asked uh, Jeff Bertel, who is uh, uh, running uh, the, IV, uh, the IT tonight, that if anyone at home feels that they cannot hear one of our aldermen or something being said, to kindly uh, email Jeff, and you can do that immediately tonight, jeff.bertell, that's B-I-R-T-E-L-L, -L, at cityofdekalb.com. And we'll try to see that the volume level for one of our aldermen is, uh, is adequate. With that, I would like to ask us to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on tonight's agenda is approval of the agenda, and I would uh, indicate to anyone who uh, would like to add or any or take something off the agenda to let me know that right now. I don't see anybody, so I would entertain a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. Seconded. It's been moved by Alderman Favor, seconded by Alderman McAdams. The city managers. Mayor. Uh, the Egyptian Theater Board would like to um, have the, the council table the item which uh, pertains to them toward the end of the um, agenda tonight, which was to create a, a special li liquor license for them. They want to have a little more time to think about some of the details okay. of that. I think what we'll do is leave it on the agenda at this point. Okay. When we get to that item, we'll table it. Is that okay? Okay, good. Uh, so, uh, it's been moved by Alderman Favor, seconded by Alderman McAdams, that we approve the agenda as printed. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Morris? Yes. Finucan? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Favor? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. The agenda is approved as printed. We now move to the public participation portion of our agenda, and we do have several uh, folks who have indicated a desire to participate in public participation. We do have a couple that came in a little bit late, and I've taken the liberty to uh, ask you if I may read those. Those are relatively short, uh, but everything else I think you have seen. So, the first one, and I don't think we have anyone in the audience who'd like to speak, so we'll go to the first item, uh, the first uh, person who has indicated a desire to let their views be known, and that comes from Mark Charvat, and as is the case, if Mark were here, I am going to limit his comments, which I will read to three minutes. If we get near the end, I may opt to paraphrase, but I think I can do this in three minutes. And this is from Mark Charvat. Mayor, Council, and citizens of the city of DeKalb, along with staff, the COVID-19 crisis has taken us all by surprise and changed our way of lives and will probably impact each and every one of us for a long time to come. One thing we have all learned from this crisis is that all levels of government fail to plan for this from a health-related point of view. Unfortunately, we cannot go back in time and change that. We can go forward and start planning on the fiscal end of things. With the extreme likelihood of a severe contraction in sales tax revenue due to consequences as a result of the coronavirus, it's important for the city of DeKalb to start fiscal contingency planning and do it now. I realize we won't know the exact sales tax numbers for a while, but let's get ahead of this. The city of DeKalb is going to be hit by a large downfall in restaurant and bar tax, along with sales tax, the likes of which we have not seen in a long time. Despite Mayor Smith's comments on Tuesday that we will realize revenues from increased grocery store sales, 
it will now make up for the massive loss of tax revenue from restaurant and bar sales, gasoline sales, and general merchandise purchases. It is time to convene the Finance Advisory Committee and plan contingencies. Those contingencies include, but are not limited to, budget reductions, reassessment of spending priorities, hiring freezes, layoffs of non-essential personnel, tax rebates to residents, many of which are going to have a difficult time making their property tax payment this spring, and pulling an immediate halt on TIF expenditures and projects. We also need to take a look at the status of our pension investments. With the markets down about 30 to 40 percent, funding of our pension obligations will have to increase. This will likely result in one to two million dollars a year going toward an additional payment needs. This money was never figured into city projections. In 2021, I predict that we will need to ramp up considerable funding to meet that loss. Most likely a property tax increase will be proposed. This is going to take a major fiscal toll on the citizens of DeKalb who will be very hard pressed especially those who are now not working to pay their property taxes if the city decides to increase the obligation on residents during the next budget cycle. In addition to the convening of the Finance Advisory Committee, I also recommend utilizing the underutilized committee of, whole, of the whole meetings to hash out plans. Also, city leaders need to follow the paths of other Illinois communities who are engaging in forward thinking to help residents. For example, the city of Aurora is suspending parking tickets. The city of Rockford is deferring collection of food and bar taxes. I grew up in the village of Schomburg. My dad was a village trustee for many years, and he's always reminded me of the slogan the village embraced, progress through thoughtful planning. The city of DeKalb needs to embrace that way of thinking. We will eventually get through this crisis, but the time to plan is now. Signed, Mark Sharvat, 4th Ward, City of DeKalb. Mark, you did a great job. You only took three minutes and 25 seconds. Okay, public participation, uh, number two. This is very short, so I don't think I even have to set the time on this. This is from Tony Verbick. An important email that was sent to all city council members concerning COVID-19 has ended up in your spam email folders. The email was sent on Thursday night at about 8 p.m. and the email address is support at decalbemf.com. I will try to send you direct postal mail in future communications. That from Tony Verbeck. The next two are two very short ones which I received today. One is from Linda Ellison who lives uh, I think this is probably either in the first or second ward. We will, uh, she says I'd like to know if and how you are going to enforce shelter in place. As a senior citizen, I am very concerned that many are not abiding by this. I live in the heart of the college area. My patio faces Annie Glidden Road and the traffic is horrendous. These people are not going to get food and meds and work. It's all day and night, every day for the safety of all and this needs to be enforced. I'd also like to address the hoarding situation going on in DeKalb. People are being very greatly and inconsiderate to others. I can't find a package of toilet paper anywhere, nor a loaf of bread. Please tell us to just buy what we need for one or two weeks at a time. I'm extremely scared of what this is going to lead to. Linda Ellison, E-L-L-I-S-O-N. So perhaps we can find out in what ward she's in. She's on Annie Glidden, she might be in Tony's, she might be on Carolyn's, she may even be in Bill's. So uh, we'll see if we can find that out and let you guys know. The other one is from uh, Bessie Kronopoulos from the Fifth Ward. A very short email, which surprised me. She wanted these comments read into the record. No to the O'Leary deal, examine TIF in more detail in public, get the audit and have the state's attorney announce, hopefully in one public session, 
like a press conference. Start thinking about issues we need to deal with for the future of the community. Too bad we've lost ground by ignoring the cow meetings. Big mistake. Not sure if we'll be able to catch up, but we should try. That from our former mayor, Bessie Chronopoulos, a resident of the fifth ward. So those are the uh, two public, uh, those are the uh, public comments uh, we have uh, under public participation. We do have a couple of more uh, that the folks would like to be read when we hit the, those uh, places on the agenda. And Ruth, we have no other public participation from anyone in the audience? No. Or any more? Okay. Then we will uh, move along now to E, presentations. So Mr. Bertel, if you would be so kind as to cue that up, please. And if you'd watch the screen. Every 10 years, we get one shot, just one shot, to get counted. So communities across Illinois get what they need to succeed. For things like health care, child care, new roads, access to housing. In Illinois, no matter who you are or where you're from, asegúrate hacerte contar en el censo de 2020. Why be counted? Because the government uses the census to decide how much money the state needs. For every person who doesn't get counted, we lose $1,400 a year coming to our state. Why be counted? In 1950, Illinois had 24 representatives in Congress. Right now, we have 18. And we'll lose more in Congress if we aren't all counted in 2020. Fewer representatives means less support in Washington, D.C. Everyone needs to be counted. Everyone. Children. Grandparents. Renters. Folks just getting by. Me. And you. It's just nine questions, and you can complete it online, by mail or over the phone. Everyone matters. Everyone counts. Visit 2020census.gov and be counted. <laughs> By now, most of us should have received invitations to respond either by phone or online to the 2020 U.S. Census. Due to the COVID-19 situation, the Census Bureau just today has made a number of changes, most of which are delaying dates by which residents can respond. These changes, including those dealing with personal visits to larger groups of people, college students, senior residences, and those deemed homeless will be rolled out in the next few weeks. Kudos to our staff led by Jason Blumenthal and Adam Grubbs who are coordinating city census logistics. Significant efforts are being made at NIU and throughout the region by a team staffed by the County of DeKalb. The importance of this census cannot be underestimated. Uh, it's critical that everyone get counted. Moving right along, appointments. Uh, item F on your agenda, we have two appointments, two mayoral appointments. These are usually done in omnibus vote of the council. Is that okay with everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, these are the two uh, items being considered and ask uh, for your approval. Number one, appointment of Lynn Neely as chair of the Finance Advisory Committee for a two-year term through December 31, 2022. And number two, appointment of Scott Carlson to the Airport Advisory Board for a four-year term through December 31, 2024. I'd entertain a motion to approve those mayoral appointments. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Fanukin, seconded by Alderman Smith. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Fanukin? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeek? Yes. Faber? Yes. Morris? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. Those appointments are approved, and thank you. Item G, consent agenda. All items on this consent agenda are enacted by one motion unless there is a motion by one of our aldermen to uh, remove one of those items. Seeing no one doing that, I would read the following titles on our consent agenda and ask for your approval. Number one, minutes of the regular city council meeting of March 9, 2020. Number two, accounts payable and payroll 
through March 23, 2020 in the amount of $2,000,000. $594,465.94. Number three, investment and bank balance summary through January 2020. Number four, year-to-date revenues and expenditures through January 2020. Number five, Freedom of Information Act, FOIA report, February 2020. And number six, Resolution 2020-028, authorizing the execution of a workers' compensation lump sum petition and order in the amount of $59,354.59 for Eric Blanken. I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Morris, seconded by Alderman Mo uh, Perkins, uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Finucane? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. The consent agenda is approved as printed. There are no public hearings tonight. We'll move along to item I on your agenda. We have one consideration tonight, and I'd like to ask our city manager, Bill Nicholas, to speak to additional consideration of tax increment financing support for the remodeling of property at 260 East Lincoln Highway. Thank you, Mayor. I'm just gonna ask, can everybody hear me all right? Okay, yeah. good. Uh, this uh, item comes back to you at your direction. Uh, several weeks ago, there was a council discussion about a uh, request for TIF funding to do some remodeling at 260 East Lincoln Highway, the old O'Leary's uh, restaurant area. And uh, a number of options were considered. Uh, I have proposed a couple of new options for you, which take all of any consideration of acquisition cost out and uh, so uh, one uh, is essentially what uh, was given to us as the estimated TIF eligible remodeling cost plus about $5,000 to redo the fencing in the outside eating area so that uh, the access at the exactly at the corner would be a little uh, more agreeable to pe people, especially people that may uh, have trouble with mobility. And then uh, option E, which was uh, the other uh, new option, is the uh, TIF remodeling costs as presented on a document which I gave you and which is available at the last meeting. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. I, either D or E would be recommended by our staff. So, Bill, you're looking for some direction from City Council as a result of the yeah. fact that we were unable to re reach any consensus whatsoever on uh, 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 options A, B, or C uh, provided at our last meeting. Is that correct? Right. So the question, as you know, is do we go forward with this or do we not? And in light of, of um, some of the comments you read into the record tonight, Mayor, a lot of people are wondering where do we go from here? Uh, this is an opportunity to work with some local people who have uh, been willing to make the investment uh, in, in a property that has been vacant for a number of years and uh, are willing, uh, I've had some consultation with them since the last meeting, are willing to move beyond the acquisition costs as a piece of that and just look at the remodeling cost and that's what's before you tonight. Thank you. We have one uh, public uh, comment on this particular item on the agenda and that once again is from Mark Charvat. The amount of discretionary taxpayer dollars that are being utilized for TIF projects in, in 20 and 20 and 2021 come to a total of approximately eight million six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. This is a combination of TIF 1 and TIF 3. Taxpayers pay approximately 11.9% of their property tax to the city of DeKalb, including the library. Many members of the public, including myself, consider TIF a luxury the public can no longer afford. In this stage of the coronavirus, the reality is that sales tax revenues will take a major hit. Our community can no longer afford free handouts to developers when you have a population in great need. To the city council, 
Your constituents have been hit hard, and so far we've only scratched the surface. Job losses, along with other businesses closing, are hurting the very foundation of our community. Community members are looking for help. When citizens see that the city is going to give away $8.6 million in taxpayer dollars during 2020 and 2021 to millionaire business owners, there's a shock and awe. This must stop now. It is time for this city council to put a stop to TIF spending and return the money to your constituents. This year and next year, I am asking the City Council to declare a surplus, return the tax increment financing dollars to each of the taxing bodies. Declaring a surplus would allow the City of DeKalb and the Library their 11.95% combined share of this money, which would amount to over $1.03 million. The city then would use, could use its share to help establish small businesses and individuals who were out of work and those less fortunate in our community. Between 2020 and 2021, the city will hand out a shocking $3.35 million in taxpayer funds to developer John Pappas alone, while struggling businesses are just trying to make ends meet and laying off employees. This must stop now. The $1.3 million could go a long way to assist the people in this community. That being said, there are some issues with the former O'Leary's restaurant proposal. Previously, option B would have provided 30% of the estimated remodeling cost of $37,230. Option C would have provided 40% of the estimated remodeling cost of $49,640. Now suddenly the remodeling costs have tripled weeks ago when City Council met. The remodeling cost was $37,000. It's suddenly escalated a new cost of $124,000. This sounds mighty suspicious to me. How can the remodeling cost triple from two weeks ago? Does anybody else find it strange now that the property acquisition costs removed in options D and E that the remodeling costs suddenly triple? I believe it's imperative for the city manager to explain to the council and to the public how the remodeling costs suddenly tripled in the last 14 days. Council, it appears you're being scammed. I recommend a no vote on this proposal. Mark, you only took three minutes and 23 seconds. Mayor, just to clarify for you, please sure. don't comment, but since the charge has been that we're fabricating numbers. Absolutely. Uh, the math is very very clearly laid out in your background, and, and I'm sure Mr. Charbot read it as well. 25% um, of that cost, which I gave you tonight, and which has been out there in the public domain for several weeks, was a number, and 30% was a number, and 40% was a number. The remodeling cost hasn't changed. It's the same, and that's abundantly clear in the background for you tonight and it was read I'm sure but it makes a better story if you present it this way okay uh, that okay that is the uh, explanation of where we are from our city manager and uh, you heard uh, one citizens take on this uh, and uh, again if you recall we were all over the map uh, a couple of weeks ago on this and I would open it up for any consideration what we're being asked for now to uh, either support option D or option E any comments please <clears throat> if uh, yep. we were to to go home along with one, either of these options I would prefer going with option D including the outside fencing as it is, as the fencing currently sits, it's impossible for somebody in a wheelchair to get around the corner of the fence um, where the curb cutout is. So if we can have that reconfigured to include where it would be ADA compliant, that would be much preferable to me. Uh, again, uh, you know, with so much unknown at this point, and, and this is not up for a vote tonight, uh, but at least that that would be my opinion as we move forward to uh, consider option D option E as in D. Edward D as in dog D as in dog okay any other thoughts Alderman Smith uh, to go with Alderman Fanuc and, and I wish the city engine was here Zach do we does the property not have to come into ADA compliance as far as the outside is concerned 
In other words, does the property, we would almost be required or they would re be required to make it ADA compliant. Yeah. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, and, and I wasn't around, but somebody obviously declared it ADA compliant before because it couldn't have been in the IDOT right away without doing that. But it's, it's a tight fit, you know, three, if it's a, I don't recall if it was 48 inches or 36 inches to get around the corner, but um, it's it's a tight fit, and you're right at the slope for the ramp <coughs> at the intersection, sidewalk intersection there. So uh, clearly, and 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 uh, Alderman Verbeck mentioned the same thing uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's it's something that should be considered. And if this were approved, item for example, option D. We could recommend to the developers uh, who have indicated, I, I understand, a desire to go ahead with the project if we give you some direction mm -hmm. tonight. Uh, we could urge them to do something with that outside patio. And, I, and I've asked, and they're agreeable to that. We yeah. Okay. went over the options with them. Yeah. Uh, the reason I say that is I think those outside areas are a big draw for us, and uh, at least that's what has been proposed to me, that you know, people would like to see those filled. I don't know what, I think all councils are shaking their head. I agree that that's the kind of scenario we want downtown. I just want to make sure that we're bringing it up to specs and mm -hmm. there's no issue. So Alderman Smith, you would you would generally be in support of D or E? Yes, it, of D is in dog. Yeah. Uh, I have some questions about the money we put into that building years okay. ago. I, I really do, I've gotten hit <laughs> with that. That's my only biggest drawback. But I do want to see the downtown turn around. I think we all agree we're making those uh, tough decisions to point it in that direction. Um, so yeah, I would. Okay, good. Any other thoughts? Alderman Verbeek. And how does the JRB fit into this now with TIF proposals? Mm -hmm. So uh, ideas come to us, yeah. we discuss them. Uh, all of the other taxing bodies are partners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, this, with the school district holding the, the largest uh, part of that. Uh, I know that it's been practice for these proposals to come to us first, but don't we really need the support of the JRB to make this a reality? Yes, uh, I can speak directly to that because it's been a topic of conversation since January of 2019, as you know. And we had three special meetings in January, February last year, and then we started quarterly meetings rather to supplant the annual meeting. And we had our first quarterly meeting back at the end of January of uh, this year, and we have another one coming up in April. The JRB is pretty pretty clear about this. They're getting uh, for for TIF one uh, up to 2020, our current current fiscal year. Um, the um, downtown's projects um, came out of a pool of money, half of which was surplus at the end of the year, right? So TIF 3 now exists, and it happens to cover a lot of the downtown by design and covers a lot of the lots that were once in TIF 1. So TIF 1 basically bleeds through and transfers a, a large part of what was in TIF 1 into TIF 3. So TIF 3 looks a little bit richer in terms of overall budget, but the actual accrual is only about a half a million dollars a year. But there's a big transfer of over $4 million if you, it's in your budget. Um, in answer to your question, what they've said is, we don't need to approve the projects. That's up to council to do, and they've been very specific about this. But bring us projects that are TIF eligible. And their main concern going back uh, a year and three months ago has been other uses for TIF monies uh, that were something of a habit in previous years and previous administrations. The idea of using up to almost $900,000 a year out of the TIF budget to help bail out the general fund shortages. And uh, obviously that came to a stop. Uh, and uh, that, but that was one of the reasons why we had a forensic audit and spent a considerable amount of money to, um, to it's nearly finished, we, th we think it's about finished, it's, it's with the state's attorney now. So uh, the short answer is, that's context for people who are looking in tonight, but the short answer is uh, they've been pleased with the projects we proposed 
and um, they know that we're looking at them carefully. They know that TIF eligibility is, is a keystone of decisions you're going to be making. So these particular, the list of particular expenses is definitely TIF eligible. There, there are not things in here such as tables and chairs and dishware and so forth. These are changes. Uh, some of them are facade changes, which are eligible. Some of them are changes to plumbing, electric, and so forth. So all those things are eligible. So it, it's not as if we're sending it to the JRB no. for approval? No. Okay. No. Thank I, you. I would report. I've been reporting, and they've been saying, oh, that's interesting. And for the first time they've been in the last year and a half, they've been getting very detailed reports of what the projects are, how much is being proposed or has actually been spent. Uh, they're getting quarterly summaries from our finance office, which show every dime spent in, in TIF projects and and um, debt service and every other TIF expense. So I think they're, they're feeling they're informed. They're feeling that you are informed, that you're making good decisions. Thank you. And Alderman Verbig, I wouldn't suppose to try to speak for the members of the Joint Review Board, but I've attended each and every one of those meetings that our city manager alluded to, and there's just been general support for not only the projects, but I could just sense that there was a, uh, uh, a great buy-in, if you will, of what, of what we're doing as a city council in downtown DeKalb. So, right. so does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Alderman Morris. So we've considered past TIF uh, expenses with expected um, number of years return on investment, mm -hmm. uh, like that's what we did with the last one, um, which is what any investor should do when you're considering investing in something. You want to know how soon the payback is going to be. And so with our last, uh, we considered our ROI, our return on investment, and we assessed how soon will we make this back. Um, with the current environment amid COVID-19 and the strain that all of our restaurants will be experiencing, it seems imprudent as an investor to decide to open a restaurant in the next six months. It seems, and to invest more in upgrades to that building seems really risky. Um, and I think that we as a city, recognizing our part in this, we become the uh, guaranteed funder of this. And that makes it more safe for them. But I feel like we are now, because of the current environment, backing an extremely risky proposal. The likelihood of success of this business has just gone down, and the return on investment has most certainly gone down because we're going to see that everyone's funds are tightened. And then we're also going to find ourselves in a position where we feel the need to support our current local businesses because they've just been hit so hard. And so I'm already hearing outcry from the community saying, how can you help us? How can you help us from the business owners? Mm -hmm. And I think we're trying to do that. Um, and so it's, you know, of course we want to invest in our downtown, make it beautiful, make it viable, make it, you know, fill the storefronts. Um, but if I was the one who was about to open this business, I would certainly be cutting costs as fast as I could and trying to, you know, tighten the budget of this plan. And in that sense, when we guarantee the city's support with the number of dollars that we guarantee them to, we're not encouraging them to act within rational market measures. Thank you, Alderman Morris. Any other comments? Alderman Favor. So obviously this is 100% of the remodeling costs in the sidewalk repair. <coughs> is that when you've spoken with to the uh, to the, sp the developers, is that the minimum? Or, I mean, if we don't give them 100%, could we, like an EI, uh, an architectural improvement or a facade improvement project is 50%. If we said we'll give you um, 65,000, would that, would that do it? Um, by the way, uh, Tom Weaver's in the audience tonight and is 
is uh, available to answer any questions about whether it's the risk or, or the other. The, the project in this case, and it's how you want to cut it, but the project in this case, unlike, say, the Bayes, which is the last one we did, mm -hmm. where they are current owners, they'd owned the property for 30-some years and so forth, uh, did not have the acquisition cost in it. So the project cost for them is acquisition and the remodeling. So it's, it's a different number, or, or, but if, if you just want to look at the, the actual construction, reconstruction piece, you're right. Um, and that's your call. I just served it up that way. Sure. No, I, I, you know, I, I want to support it. I, again, it's, um, it's a building that's been sitting empty for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think now is the time to invest in things. Um, but again, want to be prudent. Want to get the best use out of the uh, of the cities and the and the our yeah. other taxing bodies. There's another way to look at this, and we haven't talked about this in the last two weeks, but um, you know, the next one may also have an acquisition cost to it, or it may be an existing owner like the house, uh, which mm -hmm. uh, may, maybe wants to hold on to it and, and, uh, and, re and remodel, so there's no acquisition cost. Um, the c I'm not sitting where you're sitting. I envisioned in the background, as you saw, uh, only uh, about three projects for the year downtown uh, and uh, you know with a cap of somewhere around one hundred fifty thousand dollars that's that's what the increment's going to be for now and forever once tiff one goes away uh, so uh, or something less or you could stretch four but you know that, that so we've been looking at a percent, which is one way to look at it, and another way to look at it is what are the actual buildings that we think, there aren't that many, you know, uh, what are the ones that we think are going to need attention and, and planning, and one of, the, one of the remarks earlier was we don't do any planning. Well, we do a lot of planning, and the planning downtown shows that there are some identified areas that need help, and there, there are some others that may come to us but don't necessarily need the TIF help. So. This is one. We've identified this. We identified the house. We've identified McCabe's. Uh, there are a few other uh, possibilities. Uh, so um, that might figure into your thinking tonight. And Alderman Verbeck, what are the risks? Can you did, did you have sp specific risks well, that you you I, needed to? Yeah, I think yeah. the specific risk that I'm thinking of is um, taxes. You know, I, I don't see, so where the prognosis for the return on investment was perhaps, and we don't have that in this set of options, but where the prognosis for, um, for future return on investment would have been two weeks ago, it would have been say, you know, this full amount would have been repaid within seven years. We're in a different environment where we can't predict that as well right now. And, and I, to, to add to that, I am thrilled that they're considering, um, you know, fixing ADA compliance on the sidewalk. I think that's critical. I think that's really important. I'm glad that they're considering doing that. Um, and I think I'm still, you know, in support of, I guess, I think the biggest thing, too, that scares me, uh, I've had a few people reach out concerned about acquisition costs, because what that does is it artificially inflates the cost of all the buildings in the downtown area. And then you've got, oh, we can raise prices by 25% on mm -hmm. all the buildings because the city's going to pay for it. So we don't want to set that precedent specifically. Um, so I, I think I'd be much happier with no acquisition costs. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely would love to support fixing this ADA compliance issue, uh, you know, and, and certainly probably with the environment perhaps that you know you could flip the co the stone on the other side and say well because of the environment now we're going to have to work that much harder to incentivize people to invest downtown so you know there's two sides to it mayor uh, if i may just to, I, I agree 100 percent by the way on the acquisition cost but um, in terms of risk and in, in the current circumstances we have to remind ourselves that this is a property tax tiff and i have figured both property tax and sales tax into calculations before and I made them clear for you so you can see how much. In this case, we're not considering a sales tax uh, quotient here at all. It's just property tax. And even if they don't sell one hot dog, 
or taco or whatever it is. When they add the money they're going to add, it automatically increases the EAV and will continue to generate more property tax money, good times and bad. That's the advantage of the property tax tip and the advantage of a property tax uh, uh, centered decision. So just like I mentioned that. It's a good explanation, Tony. Uh, still on. Alderman uh, Favor. So, I, and I, I don't want to get hung up on a percentage. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get, um, you know, if, I guess what I want to look at is obviously the, the amount of dollars that we're spending or, or proposing to spend here in option D um, is much less than some other projects that we have approved. Um, we want the business to come to DeKalb. I guess my, my only question is, you know, that what we lose as a public body at the negotiation table is all of our meetings have to be public. We can't, we can't discuss this in private and then say, go to the, mm -hmm. go to the uh, purchaser and, and, and propose this and let them know this X, Y, Z, because, but, you know, it, if, if we could do less than 129, if, if 100, if you just need 100 and that makes you feel comfortable to make your investment in DeKalb, I'd love to do that. that. That's all I'm asking. But I'm for the project. I would be with my fellow aldermen uh, at option D. I would just, okay, you know, we'd like to spend, we'd like to spend the least amount of money we have to spend as well, so. I think that map to which I alluded earlier is getting a little bit smaller, uh, in which case I think we're perhaps a little bit closer to uh, reaching some kind of consensus so our city manager can decide whether or not, along with the developers, and whether or not they want to bring this back to council for approval. Uh, Alderman McAdams, Alderman Perkins, do you have any thoughts or are you pretty much uh, <laughs> Uh, comfortable with what consensus I think I'm hearing from Alderman Morris, Alderman uh, uh, Fanuka, and Alderman Smith, and Alderman Favor tonight, and Alderman Verbeck. And if I put any words in your mouth, please let me know. Alderman Perkins. I just have, have real reservations, um, essentially setting a precedent of fronting costs for a turnkey business already. Um, in, in some ways, um, you could argue that that's going straight to the price of the business itself. So, I don't know, I just have, I have those reservations. The other projects we've, we've had have all been pretty large in scope, pretty clear. The Mooney thing was, was clear. The, um, the one in the corner of, of First and Lincoln was clear. Those three are, are large and clear. This one, we're starting to go down a path of a new precedent where we've got plenty of other businesses downtown that for whatever reason aren't stepping up. Um, and I understand the, the recovery in the EAV, um, but another option is turning it back to the taxpayers if we can't be, find a good project for, for the city. Um, so I just have those, and I hear the, the, the input that's, that's come back from constituents and it's been pretty, pretty colorful, <laughs> um, pretty passionate, um, and I think we have to, have to hear that. So, um, I'm very supportive of the, the ADA addition and requirement. I think that's, that's good stuff. Um, just concerned about the precedent that it, it essentially sets. Thank you. Alderman McAdams and then Alderman Verbeek. So my ward has been overwhelmingly opposed to the project, but I personally cannot wait to, uh, to dine in at the restaurant. Um, I'm a big proponent of our downtown, um, but my ward is a very strong, uh, very, in, stands in very strong opposition to TIF spending in general. And so I have not heard uh, any support for the project. I've heard nothing but opposition. Alderman Verbeek. Is it a dollar figure? So is it for those with concerns? Uh, do we want to look at making a contribution to those eligible costs of 50,000, 40,000? Is it a number that you would be comfortable with or is it just a level of discomfort in general? 
Alderman Faber. So I will, I'll just add some, some more commentary. <laughs> so, um, you know, we have a new, we have a new chain restaurant coming to DeKalb and they're going to demolish a building. And all I've heard was, you know, all you see in the comments, why can't they use the existing building? Why do they have to tear down that building? And the answer is because they have to make the building their own. So we have a builder, a developer coming and taking an existing building and wanting to put $125,000 to make it their own. And we're saying, no, we don't want to do that. So I'm getting confused by the comments from different people. Do we want buildings torn down? Because that's what we've done with the three major projects is we've torn down buildings, but we need, to res we need to keep the historic value of the buildings that we have, and we need someone who can come in and remodel those and put them to use the way they are, and that's what's sitting here in front of us. And we're saying, no, we don't really want to do that. So just, just some comments to give back to your mm -hmm. constituents is, do we want to tear down a building? Because potentially, if it sits long enough, that's what's going to happen. Alderman Morris. To sort of echo what um, Alderman Faber is saying, I, I don't think we should throw the baby out with the bathwater here. I think that if we have TIF, we should be using it for something. And if, we, if our community doesn't want TIF, then we should stop having it. You know, it, it seems silly to have this fund that we're setting aside money in, which is intended to be a stimulus for the community and then not use it at all. So I think, you know, I think I am in support of option D because I don't want to discourage this from happening and I do think um, we want something to happen here. Even though there have been a couple of comments tonight, uh, I think there's clear consensus, Bill, that you can bring this back to our next council meeting if you would. Uh, and we'll, we'll decide whether or not we want to support this project. There's great momentum in downtown DeKalb. I realize with the COVID situation now, there's a great amount of uncertainty across this community, across this nation. But, you know, if we really genuinely believe, as I do, that we will get through this, whether that's two weeks, two months, you know, whatever, uh, then I think uh, we have to continue to take a long-range look at what's happening in our downtown. Okay, so I, if you would bring that back to Hello. us, uh, City Manager Nicholas, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, and thank you for, for the comments, everyone. I appreciate it. Okay, now let's move along to item J of the uh, agenda. We have uh, a number of resolutions. Number one, resolution 2020-029 authorizing a permanent bus stop easement agreement with DeKalb One Preservation LP in an amount not to exceed $2,760 for the purchase of three permanent bus stop easements located within the University Village subdivision. I'd entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Fanukin, seconded by Alderman McAdams. City Manager Nicholas, please. It's a long title, almost as long as my background. <laughs> uh, just to highlight the fact uh, that two of these three easements uh, pertain to locations with bus shelters. We should have had the easements before we did the shelters. And, and another is a third location that can be used for future construction of a bus shelter in, in this specific area. So we, we support this. The, the funding is coming from the federal grant, which supports our transit program. Thank you. Any discussion? Roll call, okay. please. Mayor. Excuse okay. me. I'm sorry. Alderman Smith. Bill, has there been? I've been getting hit with. Are we doing anything with other bus stops within this community? Uh, we seem to be focused. Yeah. I know there's a high priority up on Andy Glidden Road, but there's. Yeah. We, um, we other people have been very bold. We, well, we went through. No, I can't tell you exactly what month. About a year ago, um, a number of. Uh, updates uh, we had a, a um, shelter building program back in 2018 into 2019 and you may recall there are a couple that had not been completed one out on health services drive I believe it was so 
there have th maybe a dozen shelters built. Sorry, I'm saying this in front of the world, but I believe it's about that number. And so these these are three among them. But there's it's a very in, uh, highly populated area, so it's it's an area that uses the bus service often, and uh, it, it seems to make sense. I was yeah, I guess where I was starting to look is the Sycamore Road corridor, where mm -hmm. I know we're getting a lot of high usage as well. That yep. uh, that's what I've been getting hit with. This and there are bus shelters there, and uh, bus shelters spread around town. So those shelters were spread as a result of a planning process going back probably several years ago, and and they'll be looking for more opportunities as as the ridership identifies itself. Right Thank now. You. Uh, this month, obviously, it's reduced, but uh, we'll be back and we'll keep watching it. Thank you. Yeah, that that was part of our DSATS. Uh, That's just where I was going to go, Mr. Mayor. Uh, DSATS, uh, the Calvary Transportation mm -hmm. Policy Group, over the last four or five years has mm -hmm. uh, approved and built a number of shelters all right. over the uh, community, both in DeKalb and Sycamore. A lot of varied locations. Some along Sycamore Road, uh, some within the city of DeKalb, some along in Sycamore. So it's again, this is just continuing that project. Uh, it's actually the uh, uh, county administrator, Gary Hansen, his uh, favorite project, so. Right, that is true. Thank you, Alderman Smith and Alderman Finucane. Thank Any you. further discussion? Yes, sir. Roll call, please. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Faber? Yes. Morris? Yes. Finucane? Yes. Smith? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. That resolution is approved. Number two, resolution 2020-030, authorizing a professional services agreement with Engineering Enterprises Incorporated for engineering design of Lincoln Highway Lane reconfiguration in an amount not to exceed $152,500. Motion, please. So moved. Seconded. Did you? Alderman Favor moved. Second by Alderman McAdams. City Manager Nicholas, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is another uh, TIF project. Uh, it's the only public infrastructure project that I have proposed in the last 15 months and will propose uh, through the life of uh, TIF 1. Um, and it's a fading opportunity that could have been done a long time ago. We have done a number of streetscape projects in the downtown, certainly, and a number of them are crumbling and breaking up. The, all the brick streets which look beautiful for the first year or two, or not streets, but sidewalk areas are now starting to pop and, and so forth, and we're gonna have to deal with that. But, but the ideas were nice, and the, and the principal guiding idea has always been, let's keep our downtown, or let's renew the the possibility our downtown is a destination, not just a speedway or a drive-through. And back when the, when the deal was done in the late 70s to convert from a three-lane to a four-lane to take a lot of the parking off the downtown, which has been rude by many for many years, um, the decision was made to put the minimum area of sidewalk on both sides, and that's what we have. On a rainy, sl slippy, slushy day or just a wet day generally if you're downtown you're hugging the buildings when you're walking it's not you're certainly not sitting on those benches unless you enjoy getting splashed um, people just don't hang out and there isn't the opportunity to hang out because there's not enough room you had another four or five feet on either side now you've got room in front of almost every place downtown a restaurant or, or just a, a commercial office building Put a couple uh, tables and some, a couple round tables and uh, and some chairs. People can sit out there, enjoy, commune with each other, and and really make it a welcome place. So, we've had some preliminary conversations. This is part of some discussion we had a year ago, uh, and also through the budget preparation. Some con con uh, conversation with uh, IDOT District Three, just to see would there be would there be an open consideration of plans that might be brought to them. And I thank Zach Gill, our city engineer, for opening this up. I thank District 3 for willing to, being willing to look. And at this point, they've said, you know, 
you're paying for it. It makes sense. Uh, we can't give you diagonal parking. Not going to happen. But uh, we see how this could meet your objectives. We want to see more plans. This is state-owned and operated property. And so uh, the next step is to what I proposed here, uh, is to fund the, the engineering. I, I put this up in some detail for you because once, you know, you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound here. You spend that kind of money, $152,000 on engineering, you should be thinking about what the end game is. And the overall cost, which was uh, attached as a, in the deep background, which you may have seen, uh, a little over six, about 650000 for constr actual construction. And there'll be more uh, construction oversight by uh, an engineering team that's not included in this. So it's a little bit under a million dollars probably and hopefully it, obviously we don't have the plans to go to bid yet and so forth but I, I recommend this strongly it's really cut uh, the uh, the eye of, of our downtown merchants we have another meeting tomorrow we meet monthly we've been meeting monthly since uh, early in 2019 and and they're just hoping that we can do whatever you're willing to do to um, attract people to the downtown and those that are hanging on now especially I think would agree and we'll, we'll hear that tomorrow uh, now it's not going to happen tomorrow the what's projected here is that the plans will be done this year um, we bring them back to you and you decide so and by the time the plans are done we'll have a much tighter estimate of what the actual cost of construction will be because we'll have gone back and forth with IDOT are there any utility issues that we hadn't thought about our basic assumptions about the location of lighting and so forth are going to be about the same or not and then you can you can pull the plug but I wanted you to know right now you're in it for $152,000 we have the funding for that I think it's a good project and I recommend your approval any discussion God I, sh I wish we had this now you know in place it, this is exciting stuff to me in looking at it so uh, I certainly think this might be something that the council ought to consider positively. Alderman Verbeek? Will that allow for, an, it's hard to say at this point, I understand, but will that allow for enough space to have a little seating out front of particular locations that yes. they want that? Yes, in fact, uh, more. I mean, right now we really don't. You've got nine or eight, nine, ten, it varies, uh, feet, and, uh, and then all of a sudden you're on the curb. and. Uh, there's really no room to have people pass and um, you know you have awnings dripping on you and so forth but uh, it would change things. Sycamore has uh, about 15 feet. I was city manager in Sycamore when that streetscape was done. Bef before that was done they had the old, the, the, from the 1930s they had the slate curbs of different sizes and shapes and people were tripping on them every time they went to the penny meters to pay and uh, grass, grass, not just a few weeds, were growing through the, the old uh, depression era sidewalks. People finally said, we got to do something about that. There, and there was no tiff to do it. Uh, a, a lot of scraping and so forth pulled together. It turned out by the time it was all done, two and a half million dollars, maybe it's three million dollars. All of State Street and all the side streets. Uh, and then people say that changed the downtown. It, be, it Overnight it became an area where people wanted to linger and stay. We have, even though we're all being struck by particular hosp hospitality business downtown, uh, what's happening now, and it's, and it's crippling uh, commerce. Uh, but we have developed in just the last year or so a nightlife in the downtown that so we have different rhythms. We have some work-a-day offices, commercial office, and so forth during the day, and then we have a whole different crowd coming. And, and I frequent the downtown evenings. I don't eat at home. <laughs> and I see in our restaurants, and I get all around all the restaurants, and I see uh, people I've never seen before. That's a good sign that it's not just the, the same customers. Uh, we're drawing people from other places. I think this will help. Sorry for the extended No, and, and, and to follow up, would we have the ability to slow the speed limit 
uh, let's say, approaching downtown east uh, and west at 20 miles per hour, for example. Uh, is that possible? I, uh, I think it would benefit and add to the safety of, of traffic. And we, uh, ultimately, traffic that's an IDOT downtown. decision, but uh, they will consider our recommendations. 25 would be the, the, the normal speed, but we can slow that down. We all know that there are some days where uh, when, when the trucks see, if they're eastbound especially, because if you're crossing the tracks going westbound, you're already slow. But you could be going 45 miles an hour, whether that's speed limit or not, John Petrigallo, uh, eastbound. And if they see those green lights in sequence, man, they're hitting 50 by the, hit, by the time they hit 4th and Lincoln. And a lot of those are the big tra truck trailers, tractor trailers. And it's just, it's not safe. So we, we would slow that down. There would just be a center turn lane and, and one eastbound and one westbound lane, definitely. Alderman uh, Fanukin, then Alderman Morris. So Bill, two questions I've made. Will we be able to count on IDOT for any funding towards this or will this be all borne by the city? This will be borne by us. Uh, I, will, I will say, IDOT's uh, engineers will help us. In the review of the design, they have been very forthcoming and very uh, helpful. So uh, that's more like in-kind service. It, it may not be actual dollars paid, but it's in-kind. Okay. Second question is, you know, immediately uh, west of the entrance to the, what will be our city hall, is there's that big hump in the sidewalk. Any yes. chance that we can remove Gone. that? Gone. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It still doesn't meet uh, handicap standards. In fact, it's a ski slope, and if you happen to go north-south and you're going to the curb, it's actually a uh, danger to anybody, able-bodied or not. Right, thank you. Alderman Morris? I think this is thrilling. This is absolutely thank exciting. You. I've heard um, people recommend, oh, let's go yeah, down yeah. to two lanes, and so this is obviously a great compromise there. <laughs> um, so. So this this sounds really exciting, and I you know in my imagination I'm thinking like oh well, let's put in a bypass too you know send all those trucks in a whole different direction, um, so you know hopefully this will maybe it'll reduce the number of trucks that are going through there and uh, yeah I think this sounds great thank you thank you Alderman Perkins any initial thoughts on what it'll do to the traffic in the uh, and I know it's just yeah. estimate. Yeah, but it means for workarounds because people because will, will find you're reducing the capacity by 25 percent, right? For what yeah. the flow through there. Yeah, the so load, the load. Yeah. Yep. yep so you're what, right. you, what will we anticipate? You're right. So that? people already work around because of the the every, every intersection, literally downtown, has there is a no traffic turn signal. Lane. Yep. 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 So um, that has to be part of this study that goes to IDOT. They want to know too. Uh, People, uh, whether it's going to be more traffic on Annie Glidden or where it's going to be, we have to look at it. Okay. And we have to make that case to them before they decide this is a good idea. Any other comments? If not, we have a motion uh, and a second to approve this resolution. Roll call, please. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Faber? Yes. Morris? Yes. Finucane? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. That resolution is approved. Exciting stuff. Number three, resolution 2020-031, authorizing a professional services agreement with Wills Burke Kelsey Associates Limited for engineering design of Peace Road partial widening overlay and improvements to the intersection with Fairview Drive in an amount not to exceed $200,000. Motion, please. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Favor, seconded by Alderman Smith. City Manager Nicholas. Uh, I might just say to lead off, uh, you're seeing a couple different engineering, engineering firms being mentioned here, and uh, that's because Back in 2018, the council authorized, uh, with IDOT's um, participation, the creation of what was called a pre-qualified list. This is pretty typical when it comes to engineering services. Uh, uh, 
larger villages and towns and, and cities of our size where uh, as multiple projects come in, you, you can pull from a list of people who have already established their credentials, so to speak, so you don't have to go out to bid every time. That list gets revised every three to five years. It's your choice. In this case, it was three years. So we have seven different firms on that list, I believe, and, and so we're sort of working down the list, giving everybody a shot at that. But there are others that come onto the scene and want to work in our town, and so every three years is a good time frame to juggle that and see. So, so this, li this group, uh, WBK, is on uh, our list. Um, the project is pretty uh, straightforward. In the next couple of years, and uh, Alderman Fnucan can speak to this as well from DSAT's point of view, uh, Peace Road will be upgraded from the interchange going uh, north up, up through the, the bridge over uh, Union Pacific and up to, uh, uh, to uh, Pleasant Street. So this first phase is, uh, has a scope that's rather narrow. It's, it's an upgrade from Fairview Drive uh, with the various turn legs and so forth uh, uh, and down, down to the uh, tollway. And the cost of this engineering is $200,000. That's part of our five-year projection of MFT expenditures. It's in our budget for this year. Uh, the Cal County will reimburse a portion of the overall cost, 28% in fact, and there's 10% funded through agreements with uh, the developer of Park 88 in particular and also a uh, developer someday of the property east of Peace and south of Fairview. So it's, it's, uh, it's a necessary, we're participating in this, the county's participating in it and it's any discussion? Timely. Uh, Alderman Verbeck? You mentioned the full project coming up. Yeah. Uh, again, back to the speed limit topic. Yeah. Uh, is that something that, that's reviewed at that time? Alderman yeah. Fanukin, can you speak yeah. to that? I'd sure like to see that come down to 35 or 40 because of the number of accidents out there. Uh, but will that be a part of the discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to be <coughs> with the new legs at the intersection, the wider turn movements and so forth, uh, we'll bring some more safety to the intersections, but the, the main roadway in between those intersections can, will continue to be uh, much driven, and the speed limit is an important factor in that. Thank you. Anything further? Roll call. Verbeck? Yes. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Finucan? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. That resolution is approved. Thank you. Number four, resolution 2020-032, authorizing the award of bid to Key Code Media to provide a broadcast center at the DeKalb Public Library in an amount not to exceed forty-five thousand dollars roll call or excuse me motion please so moved second it's been moved by alderman verbeck seconded by alderman mcadams city manager nicholas thank you mayor back in january i presented a, a conceptual budget to you for the relocation of city hall which also included the broadcast center in the asunas room in the lower level of the library and the allocation at that time for the library upgrade with audiovisual equipment was $65,000. We went to bid uh, the RFP uh, to try to save some money, uh, incorporated some of our existing equipment, which we, we felt could be used uh, uh, looking forward uh, in, in a useful way. And, and uh, Kiko Media uh, bid on this. Uh, they were the only one to bid. You should know that. Uh, their price was $42,816. We've met, talked with them. They understood the bid documents and agreed to this price. So uh, we, we are asking you for $45,000 because uh, we may find, as we're working in the library, a couple of things that we're not anticipating. So uh, a little less than $2,500 was put in there for for that 
and uh, we recommend your approval in that this is the only bid of a, a majority, a super majority, I believe, is in the two thirds because we only have one bid. We, we did bid it, so. So you're okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Simple majority then. It's been moved and seconded, and uh, any further discussion? Alderman Verbeck. Uh, great work repurposing the equipment. Uh, also, too, uh, the system looks quite scalable, so as our needs change in the future, uh, it looks uh, very well set up to do that. Clearly, I had nothing to do with it. The specking of this, uh, <laughs> Jeremy Alexander is the guy, and uh, he's sitting in the back of the room. Well, we appreciate Jeremy's work on it and your endorsement, Michael, since you're in that business and you know that uh, backwards and forwards, I think, so in many ways. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Vanukin? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. That resolution is approved. We now move to the ordinances portion of our city council meeting tonight. We have one ordinance for second reading. Uh, that's ordinance 2020-016, authorizing comprehensive amendments to chapter 14 rooming houses. I'd ask for a motion, please. So moved. Second. Been moved by Alderman McAdams, seconded by Alderman Smith. We do have one person who would like to speak to this item before I give over to uh, turn it over to City Manager Nicholas, and that is from Jerry Wallstrom, 332 Greenwood North. If you recall, Jerry spoke to us a couple of weeks ago uh, when this item came up for first reading. Uh, and his comments are thusly. Thank you for the modification considerations given to the Chapter 14 revision. As I was reviewing the draft, I wanted to comment on two other areas. 14.3 requires all the documentation that was originally supplied when a license was initially issued to be resubmitted again when an ownership changes. Some of these are pretty involved drawings, etc. Unless there were some physical changes to the building, which is pretty unlikely, these originals could be confirmed by the new owner and only changes have to be submitted. Also, 14.2 requires a solid core door to be installed when an existing door needs to be replaced, unassuming due to damage. Uh, there should also be the option to install a solid wood door, that is, familiar six or four panel solid doors found in many homes. There are many of these rooming houses that currently have this type of door, and the owner should be able to install to match. Thank you, Jerry Wallstrom. Now, City Manager Nicholas. Thank you. Uh, the, what's before you tonight incorporated changes that have been recommended last time. Let me just address the two that, that Jerry brings up. Um, not unlike what happens with a liquor license, uh, you do review applications of new owners uh, whenever they arise. This doesn't happen very often in rooming houses, I can tell you. Uh, some, some of these rooming houses have been owned by the same people for decades. But even if it happened fairly frequently, you'd want to know something more about the new ownership. And uh, what sometimes happens is there are changes made to rooming houses and you want, it doesn't require an architect seal, but it just requires some drawings, some actual uh, floor plans that are somewhat to scale. So. Uh, we can know what their intentions are, if they intend to drop a few walls or add a few, uh, and so forth. So it's, it's pretty much a, a cost of doing business if you're, if you're, if you're doing rentals. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I don't recommend that we change the, the document for that. And the other I feel even stronger about, uh, I can tell you as an old building inspector and an old carpenter, um, a solid core door, like the ones we have here, and I can't say that they have the cores that are fire code uh, relevant, but uh, if you're a, in a rooming house, by definition, you're sharing cooking facilities with others, right? And you're retiring to your room, and that's your, your, your home. And while you're in that room, you want to be safe. And if there's a fire in a hallway, a panel door without a fire rating is not going to protect you. 
they look really good. I have in my house, most people have them in their single family residential homes, but they are, are heavily planed as the panels meet the styles that hold the door together. And you don't have a composite core, which is supposed to keep the fire out for 45 minutes. It's called a one hour door, but it's really four or five minutes. All the UL laboratories, they put doors and they put blow torches against them. Those doors will hold. You put a blow torch against a panel door and it might last for five because the glue holding the panels into the styles pops the holes and you got nowhere to go. Now they're supposed to all have windows, right, that are escape windows, but they don't all. So uh, if, if I was in your place and I'm making an investment in, in um, the safety of the people who are licensed in, or are in these licensed places, I would definitely go with solid core doors, which are an upgrade. We're not asking people to spend extra money and go through and turn them all out, but if one is damaged, as Jerry says, replace it with a door that's supposed to work. And by the way, there's lots of trim at our local home uh, improvement centers uh, where you can simulate these panels if you want. Any further discussion? Roll call. Morris? Yes. Finucan? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Favor? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. That ordinance is given approval. Number, uh, now we move to uh, ordinances for first reading. We have several tonight. Number one, ordinances, excuse me, ordinance 2020-017, providing relief related to executive order 2020-07 by amending chapter 38, intoxicating liquors, to add a new section, 38.35, Provisional Package Liquor License and amending Section 38.08, Term of Licenses and License Fees. Motion, please. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Finucane, seconded by Alderman McAdams. City Manager Nicholas, please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for taking this up tonight, Council. Sure. This is uh, definitely oriented toward our hospitality uh, industry, our local bars and restaurants, and we're trying to propose a way to give some immediate relief. And in the reports tonight, there was no time because of the way events are changing day by day mm -hmm. to get this on the agenda, but I'd like to propose something uh, in addition to this. But what's before you in this particular item, this ordinance, is that those restaurants that already have a license, so they've been vetted at the state level and the local level, and the background has all been done and so forth, but they don't have a package license and right now are closed except for pickup and delivery and drive-through. Could, if somebody said, I'd like four meals for my family, I'm gonna get them in those plastic containers and I'd like a bottle of wine with it. And currently they have to say, I can't do that. Well, what, what do you mean you can't? You always serve me wine when I go in there. Yeah, but we don't have a package license. This gives a 90-day package license. Let's see how it goes. Uh, we don't know how long this is going to last, but I doubt it's not going to be better by April 1st. And this takes them through what arguably may be the, the, the worst of whatever is ahead for us, and I support your, your uh, approval. Any further discussion on this? Alderman Finucan. Yeah, my only uh, comment is going to be that I think the temporary package license cost is too high yeah. that I'd like to have it uh, put down to $25 and have that $25 go towards next year's uh, liquor license. Great. Good. You want to make an amendment to that? I would like to make that amendment, yes. Second. So been moved by Alderman Finucane and seconded by Alderman Perkins that we amend the language in this uh, ordinance to include a uh, fee of $25 instead of waiving the instead of the 250 yeah, and, and then that would also go towards our next year next year's liquor license okay if this is approved are you pretty clear with that all, uh, city manager Nicholas yes uh, are you pretty clear with that with, with, with what we're voting yeah and, and just so you know we weren't looking to grab some money you know it looks like uh, pushing and pulling uh, the actual cost 
for those that renew their package licenses is two ish two ish two thousand two thousand so you know, we figured a quarter of a year uh, but uh, we had to do that just so you know the context and you can make it zero if you want yeah I, I still think 25 is a reasonable fee uh, and, and also that uh, you know they could still go ahead and opt to do the uh, and three payments and pay that extra yeah. money later but I'm thinking that's at 25 it's not going to particularly in these tight times it's not going to be any additional real encumbrance so we're voting on the amendment uh, any further yes uh, alderman in favor yeah, I just want to say you know kudos to yourself and staff for proposing this um, and acting so quickly to get this put in place thank you appreciate it thank you we're voting on the amendment and then we will get to the actual uh, first reading of this ordinance uh, any further discussion on the amendment suggestion roll call please Finucan yes Smith yes Perkins yes McAdams yes Verbeck yes favor yes Morris yes mayor Smith yes eight yes is there a desire to waive second reading excuse no, me we're not we're we have excuse to vote on me. the I'm original sorry. amendment first we need a motion <laughs> now to approve the ordinance as amended so moved second yes it's been moved by alderman McAdams seconded by alderman Verbeek that we approve this ordinance any further discussion roll call please Smith yes Perkins yes McAdams yes Verbeek yes favor yes Morris yes Finucan yes Mayor Smith yes eight yes I can't imagine that somebody would jump the gun mm -hmm. on a waving of second reading <laughs> at least if I do it it'd be on the right amendment yeah, right. <laughs> right motion do we, but anyway, anyone, do we have anyone who would like to waive second I reading? would like to move that we waive the second reading and approve this second been moved by Alderman Fanukan and uh, seconded by Alderman Favor that we waive second reading on this ordinance and approve any further discussion just a clarification mayor please yes. so the proposal was $25 is a fee but it can be added toward the it can uh, be renewal of the right it goes have to be towards paid renewal right okay yes okay thank you roll call please Perkins yes McAdams yes Verbeek? Yes. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Fanukin? Yes. Smith? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you. That ordinance is approved. Thank you. Now number two, I will read this. However, this is the one where we'll need a motion to a table at the request of the petitioner, and that's uh, the, the Egyptian Theater. Ordinance 2020-018, amending Chapter 38, Intoxicating Liquors. Section 38.07, Classifications of Liquor Licenses, by adding License Classification Auditorium, and amending Section 38.08, Term of Licenses and License Fees. I'd entertain a motion to table, please. I'd like to move that we postpone this until the petitioner would like staff to bring it back. Second. Okay, it's been moved uh, by Alderman Fanukin, seconded by Alderman Verbeek, that we postpone this uh, at the discretion of the petitioner. Any further discussion? Roll call. McAdams? Yes. Verbeek? Yes. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Fanukin? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. That ordinance is postponed. Number three, Ordinance 2020-019, amending Chapter 23, Unified Development Ordinance, authorizing text amendments to Article 13, Signs, and Article 18, Appeals and Variances. I'd entertain a motion, please. So Second. moved. Second. Been moved by Alderman Smith, seconded by Alderman Morris. City Manager Nicholas, please. Thank you, Mayor. And it's been a little over a month since we talked about this right. in some detail. And uh, mm -hmm. Dan Olson's in the back of the room, uh, sitting in the appropriate chair, six feet from anybody, <laughs> and uh, is here to add any uh, information if, if you have some questions. But I, I brought back what we had proposed to you 
uh, back in uh, February, and uh, remember we talked about a number of things, uh, uh, changes that had to be made to make the signs that, that are current or will be ever installed uh, uh, content neutral and so forth. We added some uh, allowance for, for uh, more uh, electronic signage and so forth. So uh, if you have questions about detail, again, uh, Dan or I will try to answer your questions. We recommend your approval. Are there any questions of either City Manager Nicholas or our Principal Planner Dan Olson on this? If not, roll call, please. Verbig? Yes. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Finucane? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. Anybody care to waive second reading on this? I'll move to waive second reading. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Morris, seconded by Alderman Smith that we waive second reading and approve this ordinance, which we have discussed quite a bit. Uh, any discussion? All in, excuse me, uh, roll call, please. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Finucane? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. That ordinance is approved. Number four, ordinance 2020 020-020 approving a special use permit for a vehicle tow facility and storage yard located at 110 Industrial Drive, JNS Tri-State Recovery and Towing. Uh, Alderman McAdams has indicated that he would like to recuse himself from any consideration or any comment on this matter. He has left the podium. I'd entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Verbeek, seconded by Alderman Favor. City Manager Nicholas, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Unified Development Ordinance requires a special use permit for vehicle storage areas, such as what's proposed here. Uh, the petitioner uh, has uh, met the requirements of the code. Uh, others who are in the towing business right now have likewise gone through a special use process, and I mentioned that as part of the background. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission reviewed this at their meeting on March 4th and unanimously recommended your approval. And uh, we recommend your approval of the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation. Any discussion? Alderman Morris. Um, I guess I, I guess I received an email discussing this issue this evening, uh, recommending some alternative options temporarily for this issue because. Um, it sounds like there is some um, disagreement about whether or not this is a legitimate business. However, uh, I guess our city attorney had indicated there were three specific options and, um, and that, of course, we're not in the place to take sides. Uh, could you go over those options again? Mm -hmm. The issue here is, is one of zoning. As I understand it, uh, there's been a threat of, of some action against one business, against this business, that really is irrelevant to the zoning topic. Uh, the zoning needs to be cited on the particular special use standards laid out in the background materials and in the, the memo from, uh, from staff. Uh, that's really the only consideration, and uh, there's really no reason to delay that or, or deny that because one company may not like this company for their name or for whatever reason and may want to pursue that somehow, some way. It's really not our, our fight. Any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Morris? No. Finucane? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Verbeek? Yes. Favor? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Six yes. Does anyone care to waive second reading and give this final approval today? Mm -hmm. Given what we've heard 
uh, from Alderman Morris and from our city attorney, uh, it would probably be prudent not to waive second reading on this tonight. Is there is there a consensus on that? Do I, mm -hmm. do I? Okay, very good. Okay, number five, ordinance 2020-021, approving a special use permit for a drive-through restaurant with an outdoor seating area, and approving a final plan for 2411 Sycamore Road, raising Kane's chicken fingers. And entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman. Fanukin, seconded by Alderman Favor. City Manager Nicholas, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The uh, applicant, as you said, is uh, uh, known as Raising Canes, and they are looking at uh, establishing their their restaurant, which is part of a, a much larger chain, national chain, and uh, fairly well known in the Chicagoland area. The the property affords the the opportunity to them in the Oakham Place resubdivision. They like that that area, that power uh, commercial strip that's on both sides of the road. And um, they uh, want a drive-through. That's part of their, their normal scheme and that requires a special use permit. So we have taken them through our process. Um, Dan Olson, our principal planner, has, has been the, the point on this. In, and uh, there's a considerable amount of detail in the deep background, and I added some of that because there was a waiver of, of uh, the, one of the parking requirements, and uh, like you, I was curious to see why and did, it, did the request stand up, and it seems to stand up, and the Planning and Zoning Commission thought it did because this, this is a type of business that um, just judging by what what they've done in other places in northern Illinois, it's it's a high volume drive-through business, not a high volume come on in and sit down and spend an hour or two eating uh, their their product. So, uh, in that context, uh, our standard is probably in the excess of what would be the market norm. And and Dan had done a considerable amount of research to establish what that norm is. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission concurred and uh, recommended your support for this petition by a vote of five to zero. And we recommend your support of the Planning Commission on this. Any discussion? Alderman Fanukin. My only comment is that it, I find it very uh, amusing to a certain extent that parking was even consideration on this <laughs> because it's in a sea of parking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's got to be within 300 feet, 300 parking spaces. So. That's, I, I couldn't believe that, that that much time was spent on a parking discussion. But otherwise, no, I'm <laughs> highly in favor of this project, and let's get it going. Mm -hmm. Alderman Favor, and then Alderman Verbeek. Alderman Favor. Which I was going to comment on the, <laughs> on, on the, the humor in, in some of the parking as well. It is interesting to note that several um, d more dense municipalities have even less parking requirement, or Mm -hmm. They approved less parking than what than what we're going to have here, um, and you know this isn't necessarily the time to say it, but I know that for apartments and things, the parking is extremely important. But when you drive down Sycamore Road, we have seas of parking lots mm -hmm. that could easily be square footage for a new business mm -hmm. that would add to our tax base instead of a parking lot that never gets used and you know becomes an eyesore and becomes you know just an expense for uh, for our business owners so there's a there's a uh, cow meeting topic that we can bring message up. received thank yes you. it's on our list thank you, thank you. yeah thank you alderman favor for that uh, alderman verbeck no i was just going to say uh with regard you know dovetailing on alderman favor's idea is is residential a possibility so developing on those parking lots would that be an option or would that have to be uh, strictly commercial for example thank you alderman or any further comment roll call please finucan yes smith yes perkins yes mcadams yes Verbeek? Yes. Favor? Yes. Morris? 
Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. Is there a desire to waive second reading and approve this ordinance tonight? I'd like to move that we waive second reading and approve. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Finucane and seconded by Alderman Verbeek that we Mayor. waive second reading. Did I say something? No, he, no. Mm -hmm. Just question. Oh, you have a question. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Should we be revisiting our parking guidelines in general? Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Beyond a doubt. Okay. Thank you. So we have a motion on the floor, a second on the floor. We've had discussion. Roll call. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Fanukin? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Eight yes. And we welcome Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers into our community. Nice. Reports and communications. Council member reports. This allows uh, each and every one of our seven aldermen to uh, report on anything they would like or comment on anything they would like to. And I will start with our first ward alderman, um, Carolyn Morris. So uh, I'll be brief. Um, I held a ward meeting via Facebook Live this past Friday night, um, which was not super widely attended, but it happened. And so I just want to let you guys know that that's an option. Um, I also published on my Facebook pages uh, a survey for apartment dwelling or rental dwelling residents in our community. So it's very brief, 10 question survey that you can answer and I think it'd be great if we could get some uh, feedback on that or that way. Um, that's it. Thank you, Carolyn. Second Ward Alderman Bill Finucan. Well, I'd just like to, uh, you know, comment that everybody please uh, stay safe out there. Uh, you know, use your social distancing. Don't may not make unnecessary trips at, uh, to the stores or anything like that or for entertainment. Uh, you read too many things where there's mass gathering still occurring uh, throughout the country and that's just one of the ways that the uh, virus will continue to spread. Uh, fortunately, I think here in DeKalb that uh, we're not seeing very much of that. So, but again, continue to be safe, keep your distance, use your hand sanitizer and wash your hands. Alder Thank you, uh, Alderman uh, Finucan. Alderman Smith, please, third ward. I canceled my third ward meeting for obvious reasons and I'm not technology savvy like first word old them so but she experimented with it good for you so we will be rescheduling as soon as this uh, is over and that's it thank you alderman perkins fourth ward no report alderman mcadams fifth ward no report alderman verbeek ward six well i had the day off today and spent a good part of it speaking with the six ward business district property owners business owners employees and it's unanimous we would like to start talking about restarting decal how can we responsibly restart uh, what would we it will be a a new way uh, certainly I think it will be some time before uh, the virus is gone and clear for people that have existing conditions but I think what I'm hearing is let's set a goal let's work with our state legislators and start working on let's say july 1st as a date that we can plan toward if at all possible or june 1st optimistically uh, i'm not sure what that would look like if that would be something right now that we would conduct online but uh, my uh, uh, numbers always available for those phone calls and i look forward to <coughs> talking with everyone about uh, what those solutions of restarting decal look like. Thank you, Alderman Verbeek. Alderman Favor, 7th Ward. I have a few items. Uh, one, just a shout out for the census. It is really that easy to do. It, it uh, really is. <laughs> I, I did two of them on my cell phone today. I did my parents for them and I did our own. Um, it, it, it literally is five minutes, 10 minutes. It's so simple to do. Um, so I encourage everyone to do that as quickly as possible. Um, the other one is, you know, don't forget, we have several grocery stores in DeKalb that in surrounding area that do offer pickup. They offer uh, delivery services as well. 
Um, so you know, don't feel like you have to go out into the store if you're you're not wanting to. There are options. Um, you might even talk with your neighbors and and combine they'll combine the shopping trip or whatever, so you don't have to to venture out if you don't want to. Um, obviously, it's been said, stay at home, uh, keep your distance. Uh, you can you can go for a walk, uh, take your dog out, go for a walk, things like that. Um, just limit contact with others and the. Um, the final thing is um, Ward 7, there is a uh, electronic parking survey that went out for uh, the neighborhood that's looking at new parking regulations and that should be back I think the first week in April. We'll tally up the results and then we'll figure out a way to have a probably an online meeting of some sort. Thank you Alderman Favor. I commend all of our aldermen for uh, their uh, proactivity and uh, reaching out to their constituents, listening to their constituents is very, very important now, perhaps more than ever that we do that. Uh, and uh, uh, dovetailing in what you were saying, Tony, regarding the uh, uh, takeouts, uh, I've just been so impressed with the, uh, with the chamber and with some of the websites and some of the social media sites about uh, identifying who some of the restaurants and bars are that have the takeout service and uh, uh, so, you know, we would encourage folks to uh, do whatever we can, not only as a city, but as a, as a population, as a community, to, uh, to help those. Uh, and uh, if uh, helping a restaurant by ordering a takeout uh, uh, once a week or once every couple of weeks, uh, I think uh, is a very, very good thing. And for those of you and for those of us interested in the move from this building to our new home at 2nd and Lincoln Highway, progress is being made. We've now scheduled a May transition due to the close physical proximity of those assisting in that physical move. So obviously so much of the COVID-19 uh, virus scenario dictates so much of our daily and our weekly routine. And uh, we appreciate your patience as we all work together during this uh, very, very extraordinary event. With that, I would see if our uh, stand-in for our city clerk, uh, our executive assistant, Ruth Scott, do you have any announcements? No, sir, no report. Okay, and Bill, I know you have a few things to report. I do, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thanks to Ruth Scott for setting up the room tonight. I think mm -hmm. that was creative and achieved our, our goal of separation and uh, still allows us to to meet if, if we choose to do so here in this room. Uh, the mayor mentioned the city hall move uh, was originally slated for uh, April 3rd, and that would not have worked with the uh, governor's guidance. And uh, so we are, uh, we put it off till May 1st, and we'll see where we are as we get closer to that. I uh, want to thank um, our, uh, our, our mover for, for being flexible in, in that respect. Um, Happy to announce uh, the search team, which included uh, Council Member Favor, uh, has chosen a new airport manager. She, Renee Riani, will start toward the end of, of April. Wanted to give her current uh, employer about 30 days. She's pretty extraordinary. She has been, uh, interestingly, among us for 10 years teaching the KEC students, uh, uh, aviation students, uh, kind of the basics with a couple other instructors out there. She's a commercial pilot. She worked for many years at, at the uh, DuPage Airport, uh, working actually for the airport authority. Uh, in two areas that we said are, are fundamental to our future at the airport. One is marketing and the other is development. And uh, she's now working for uh, a private tenant at the airport and uh, was given a, a, a nice uh, opportunity uh, some years back. And, uh, but that only filled out her resume further. Uh, she is eager to start knows a lot of our pilots, but there are a lot more that she'd like to know um, and uh, is very much committed to this particular general aviation airport. We, uh, I, th I would say the team felt that she was the strongest candidate with, without a doubt. So uh, we'll introduce her as, as she begins her new duties and uh, we're looking forward to it. Look forward to it. Uh, last thing, may I approach just to hand out something? Yes. Mm -hmm.
So uh, clearly, events are, are moving quickly. Not only is there volatility in the stock market, but uh, uh, we have had just uh, in a week's time two very significant executive orders coming from our governor uh, with the idea of helping to protect uh, public health in the state. And it's affected, as we've talked here a number of times tonight, it's, uh, impacted our businesses, businesses of, of all shapes and sizes and descriptions, but uh, particularly affected our hospitality uh, industry because the bars, restaurants, uh, various venues uh, cannot uh, serve as they have been used to serving many employees who were part-time to begin with without any, any uh, benefit packages are, are really struggling right now. And uh, although the, the most recent order may expire the first part of April, we don't know if it will. Most people are betting it. It will probably have to be extended because, uh, the, as I understand it, as you've been hearing the same reports in, in Illinois, the, the wave hasn't crested yet. So uh, in that context, what I've proposed here, well, I actually haven't, this isn't a proposal, but I'd like to bring you something, and we may even want to, it's up to you, we may even want to meet if we want to accelerate this in a special session. Um, it's been said, and I think accurately, that we could do some things for our local hospitality businesses. I've been part of a, an informal conversation that was started by Cohen Barnes and Rena Kachonis from NIU uh, last Thursday, and we had a video conference that involved local bankers, uh, uh, business owners in the hospitality business, as well as various public entities such as the city, uh, and also uh, the city of Sycamore and DeKalb County and so forth, uh, in a conversation about what can we do to help these hospitality businesses survive. And, and the ideas have ranged widely. Uh, governments don't have pots of gold, particularly local governments, and they're already bearing the strain of, of what we expect to be falling uh, sales and use taxes and so forth. Uh, private uh, financial institutions are also uh, addressing losses here that can be very significant. But uh, as we've seen just in the last 24 hours, some of our local banks or, or banks that have local branches that are now part of regional networks are looking to help their clients and their customers with some benefits in some way to cut down fees and costs and, and maybe uh, not forgive but uh, delay certain types of payments. But what can we do? And uh, we are a tax taker. We don't make tax, we take it. And that's our role, and, and we give it back in lots of services, right? Uh, looking at the hospitality uh, industry specifically, what I've done, and uh, Ray Munch and I worked on this today. Uh, he was working remotely today. Uh, I've, I've run our, our major uh, sales and use taxes out for you for six months, and what I've done is actually this is five months, looked at two nine, 2019 because we don't have the March numbers yet, the April, May, June for this year, obviously. Uh, but that gives you a year-on-year -year comparison and you can consider that last year was, was uh, about average. It wasn't great, it wasn't bad. It will be stronger than this year. And so what we might do here will have slightly less impact than what's shown here. But I'm, I'm proposing that we consider two things. One is that we basically forgive the hotel motel tax for March and April. Now that's retroactive and prospective. We don't know where we'll be at the end of April. I'm sure there will be other, other uh, orders that will come through and we'll know then. But if places can't be open, then clearly they're not making any money and they're not generating any tax anyway. And our tax would probably be much less than what's shown here for those two months. And I propose that we consider thinking about doing the same thing for the restaurant bar tax. Uh, so you'd have one month of forgiveness looking back, well, the current month of March, and then one month prospectively to help businesses directly. This is not a big, big amount of money, but it's something. 
and we don't have a, a, a plot to throw out there. Interestingly, uh, there was a slight movement this morning. I think you saw some of the email chatter to uh, just dip into our TIF fund, and there are reasons why we can't do that, although I, d I don't mind that we were asked. It's a, it's a pot of capital money, but uh, there are more than a few hurdles there uh, before we could even talk about such a thing, and this, the state legislature, first of all, would have to enable it, and if, assuming that happened urgently and quickly, which is not likely to happen, uh, then all the other local taxing bodies would have to participate in that conversation, as we said earlier tonight. So we, we have a 10% share of the increment. We're not, uh, we, we don't rule the, the, the uh, powerful revenues there. So uh, what I propose is that we consider this, and in the next couple of days, we have to give 48 hours before we have a, a meeting, uh, public notice, that we consider meeting for the principal purpose of considering whether we ought to rebate the uh, restaurant bar tax for March and April and also the hotel motel tax. So let me clarify this. We would be uh, waiving the hotel motel tax of nineteen thousand seven dollars and twenty dollars nine oh seven. That, that, no, that's just uh, uh, to give you an idea of where we were a year ago. That's to give you an approximate feel for uh, the dollars that that might be in the pot. But of course, it's going to be less because some of these places just simply aren't open. So we would waive this year's yes hotel yeah. motel OT, yeah. which you you think because of the COVID nineteen is going to be yeah. less. So we're almost at the end of March. Uh, uh, people will be filling out their forms to register their restaurant bar tax, as an example. And uh, before they send those in, maybe we ought to think about making a decision. And that would affect how they fill out the forms. Otherwise, we have a little bit of a bureaucratic uh, inertia there. Uh, you know, to undo the forms and have them fill out new forms, and uh, that's all they need right now. So, thoughts? I, are you suggesting that a perhaps a special meeting we could yep. call that with a 48 hour notice yep and we could also do that electronically could we not we could uh, since the governor has opted uh, we have to publish an agenda time. obviously yeah. uh, the uh, the council doesn't meet again for three weeks and in three weeks there are some businesses that are just done so I thought it was a good idea to try to uh, act quickly and act uh, with some substance. This could be an early shot in the arm then. Yes. Big time. Alderman Perkins. I, I think it's, thank you for, for bringing us to the table, Bill. It's, it's, it's great to be proactive on that. Um, also concerned about, since we're talking about the revenue side of things, the expense mm -hmm. side of things as well. Yes. You know, I think it's only a prudent practice to try and match the revenues and expenses as well as we can. Would we be able, would we be able to talk about something like that at a meeting like that as well then too? Yes, and uh, we should. Um, we're, we're not, as you know from the budget process that we just went through, we're not sitting on huge surpluses in any respect. With, and our general fund is taking a hit now and will continue to take a hit through the year. And we have some assumptions about what that might be. And by the time we get to the meeting, we'll have the ability to speculate a little stronger. Uh, at, you know, until, what was it, 3 o'clock on Friday, uh, we had a vision of a slightly different month, and now we got a different vision. And if there was one more level, uh, I, I, I think that would be to kill the survivors, basically, in some of these smaller shops and, and uh, restaurants and so forth. Alderman Morris. Would it make sense to invite the FAC to that meeting at all? What was that? Would it make sense to invite the Financial Advisory Committee to that meeting at all? Um, or is that too many? I, I don't, I, so th I, I've seen some chatter about this. Why don't, we, why don't we get them in gear? Well, first of all, your policy doesn't get them in gear until they have hard numbers to work on. Your policy since 2017 has been to convene them sometime uh, after June 30th, and this is what we did last year, remember, we had a joint meeting with them, when we were in a position where we could, we could help 
we could be helped in the planning for the next fiscal year. We would have then the data for about six months of the first, of the first part of this fiscal, or whatever the fiscal year was, in, in that case 2019, and then also have the general audit numbers for the previous fiscal year. So you actually have a historical uh, uh, database that you can build off of. If we bring them in, we could bring them in, we could bring in a plan committee, we can bring in any wise people, but I, I think you've got the, 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 the grounding in these matters to make judgments with or without them. Alderman Verbeek. I think we should consider doing even more if we can. Uh, if we may, again, looking at numbers like this, postpone collection and still be fiscally responsible. Uh, what, what are those things? I really appreciate what you're bringing to us, but I believe in what I'm hearing again from business owners and employees and whatnot, that if there's anything we can do beyond this, that we really need to consider that. Okay, and I appreciate that. We will, uh, as Greg said, we, we will bring back a sense of where we would be if we did what I propose tonight and a few other things mm -hmm. and where we'll be in our own because look we have it we have a general fund reserve 25 percent we hit it we got back to it uh, we're not going to hit it this year but in the natural scheme of things and you need to know where we would be whether we do anything or not and then see how far short of that we would be what are you willing to so we'd be betting on the future, obviously. We're, we're clearly doing some things in the development area that will help over time, but it's a, it's, uh, it's a delayed uh, realization of that. And uh, so we'll, we'll g give you everything we can that will help you make that decision. Yeah, when you first brought this to my attention, Bill, I mean, I just commend you for, for responding to those who are hurting those who are going to need this support and i commend you for doing that and i think this city council is in a position to send the message out to the residents of the city of dekalb especially those at bars restaurants hotels and motels that we want to be proactive in keeping them alive keeping them in this community alderman finucan mr mayor i'd like to recommend that we meet at 6 p.m thursday evening to uh, consider this if bill will put together an agenda that will meet the 48 hour minimum for uh, special notice that's tomorrow huh? <laughs> that's tomorrow thursday i know but i have to do it 48 hours in advance right so you'd have to post it by the end of the day tomorrow i could post the uh, oh you don't mean my background but no I, the agenda I, the agenda yes. we could do that thank you are you going to have your background though by thursday oh, oh yeah. yeah okay oh yeah but I, I, I can't say I'll have it want, by I don't want to do a special meeting tomorrow. if you don't have the background. No, I understand Second. that. But I think if we could at least yes. post the agenda and then background Good. to follow, I think we can do it. Thursday at 6 would uh, would work well. Okay. Alderman Morris? Um, and I don't want to get too much into the weeds of logistics, but I am highly in support of us trying to figure out how to meet remotely. And it does sound like if we um, there are plenty of apps out there that we can use if we all just use our computers. Um, but it can't be broadcast at the same time as what um, Jeremy Alexander was explaining to me. So it sounds like if we were all to go from home and on our computers, they could save it perhaps and then share it later. But he sounded on, like he could only have the audio. On YouTube? We have that capability. Is Jeremy we have that capability uh, tonight. Can you well, see didn't we have the opportunity for us to call in remotely tonight and participate? Yeah. And right. that would have still been broadcast live. So we do Correct. have that option. But it's, the sound is probably sound terrible, so and then good. we also yeah. miss all of the visual cues that um, really help a lot, I think. And I think it's totally possible to do, we, we have classrooms doing it right now. You know well, I, under, I understand that, but we may not have the, the city may not have the technology that's capable of doing that at this time. Uh, what's audio. that? Jeff said we don't want to do the audio. On the, oh, okay. All right. Jeremy's not. All right, yeah. but Mr. Mayor. Yeah, what he explained was that he can only do the audio broadcast real time, but they can, oh. all of us can on our own computers very easily do a video conferencing that 
I'm not sure how they would save and broadcast for future use. So how many how many here could meet this Thursday night here? We could, but my family is getting very angry at me okay. for leaving <laughs> the house. <laughs> but, 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 Paul, we could we could we could uh, have you remotely, yeah. Carolyn. Yeah, but I don't want to. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. the audio is going to be terrible. <laughs> like I see what I see what we have rigged back here. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, uh, Alderman Favor. So I think we have Teams, Microsoft Teams, and it does have the ability to record, so the entire conference can be recorded. If everybody yeah. takes the little Band-Aid off their camera <laughs> on their computer, <laughs> you, we can see your face when you talk. Your your mm -hmm. uh, picture will come up on the screen oh. and it, it, it can record that and that can then be now whether it can be, it, it should be able to be rebroadcast to YouTube later on at some can you come point. to my house and set me up <laughs> 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 then would you visit his right. <laughs> <laughs> by the mail. I already maintain a couple like the networks that come on no, it, it appears to me that if if you're you're making a motion, I guess. To well, I don't think I need to make a motion. That I think maybe we, we just, just have just call consensus. For it Thursday night. Yeah, we have a consensus. I, I, that I we think it's pretty here clear. Thursday night. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll do the appropriate. Uh, we doing so well so far. Okay. Um, you want we'll to do, do the appropriate it, posting? Do you want to do it a little bit earlier at five, or do you want to do it at six? Uh, I was just considering that six is our normal time, okay. and that okay. some individuals are still uh, working. So right, right, okay. And six o'clock, then Thank we you. could, and then we could televise that. Is that the thought? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Depending yeah. on the technology, we'll see that, we use. We'll see that it's tele televised. Okay, yeah. six o'clock Thursday night, special meeting to Calp City Council to consider our city manager's proposal on relief for our. Bars, restaurants, hotels, and motels. Okay. Does that make we'll sense? We'll also have uh, the opportunity for virtual comments from the right. public as we did tonight. Mm. Thanks, Bill. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Great job being so proactive. Any other comments for the good of the cause? I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, since there is no executive session uh, tonight planned, uh, Entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting of the City Council. So moved. Second. Been moved by Alderman Finucan, seconded by Alderman Smith. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.